Coach Brew, thanks uh, for joining us today on Cardinal Red Alert. Um, first half of the season, just winding up, uh, getting ready to go on Christmas break here. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, how the teams progressed, you know, under your first half of the season, you know, changing systems from what they're used to to going into, you know, what you're going to do mo moving forward. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the best part thus far has been uh, we feel we have a good majority of our guys are buying into the – the culture of what we want our program to be now and down the road as we progress and, and getting a team attitude and, and understanding roles and defining those roles and figuring out uh, um, that, you know, who needs to be taking shots, who's got to be guarding who and, and things like that, whether it, and, and their roles off the court too of taking care of their business there. So uh, the guys are buying into the culture. Um, I think the good majority of them are in. We feel confident with that. Um, but uh, we also know that, you know, some guys are always kind of sitting in the middle of the fence, not really sure whether this is really for them or not for them and, and uh, things like that. But that, that happens every year. Every year you got to build a new team. And, and, uh, but for us this year, the most important thing has been our culture of trying to get some discipline and some toughness and some accountability. You know, one of the things that you've really changed this year is, and, and some of the guys have, have talked about it, is the practice schedule. You know, you're a firm believer in the early morning practice. Yeah. Get up and get at it. Get your day started and, and do it right. Talk about how they're buying into that and how, you know, they're doing with that so far this season. Yeah. Well, I and you hate to say it this way because this isn't really the truth. Uh, the truth is that the kids are here to get an education first and athletic second. Um, but it, it, we kind of use a little flip version of it is, is we want to get up and get the most important thing done in the day. And we, you know, and, and come in and get a, a really good practice and get a really good start. And we don't mean that in any way that they're not here to get an education first because that's what they're here for. But we mean that in a way that anybody knows if you get up and get your exercise in uh, and stuff like that for your health and everything, that's kind of the first thing and, and they're locked in. We don't have many distractions at 5 and 6 in the morning. Uh, we know where they're at at night. It holds them accountable. It gets them on a normal schedule or gets them on a schedule. And, um, and, and a routine. And, and really, a routine is a really big thing. It's something we learned from a really good friend of ours. It's a head baseball coach at Vanderbilt University and Tim Corbin, who is a very, very successful coach. And, and the first time he met with our team and talked to us about a routine when I was an assistant at Northern State, it really hit home. Our guys have the same recovery every single day for their legs. Uh, we start at the same time. We don't have anybody in the gym. There's no distractions, and we can lock in on what we need to get done. And, and then they just have a, they get the class, they get the afternoons, we get our study tables in, and then at night they can, uh, we know where they're at, they're getting their rest because uh, they got to get up again early the next day. You know, early season schedule kind of uh, set up different than most people like to set up their, you know, their, yeah, early, for sure. <laughs> their early season <laughs> schedule with a lot of road games for our team this year, opposed to, you know, a uh, home heavy schedule at the beginning. Talk about how the team's you know, handled that, responded to that, and, and what you've seen with your team uh, g that you look forward to going forward? Yeah, well, I in anybody, I think any coach really, you know, specifically I know our staff, we don't like road games, uh, you know, and I'm sure most coaching staffs don't. We're not even big fans of, of you know, I know the women are going down to Savannah. You know, I'm not really even a big fan of that stuff. I really like home games, and I think it's really good for our kids to play at home and try to build uh, the community awareness and, and, uh, and support in our community to get them out to our games. And by doing that, we need to play at home more and, and show them hopefully a, a, good, um, a good product that they want to come back for. But the, the schedule we had was one that was set up when we got here, and, and the guys have had nothing but a great attitude about rolling with it. Um, and, and that has to be with us coaches. We have to have a good attitude about it and accept it. And, and hopefully in the long run, it's made us a little tougher uh, and getting ready for – uh, this league and, and getting back here for Christmas, we've got some home games, but that, uh, that's no guarantee. I mean, there are, there are so many good teams in this league that whether you're home or you're away, it really makes no difference uh, as far as a guaranteed win or anything like that. So hopefully this road schedule, I think we've had two home games out of our first eight, um, has made us a little bit tougher and, and helped us learn how to come from behind and get some of those road wins to show that we can do it on the road, that hopefully if we're in that situation at home, we can, uh, we can step up and do it there too. Uh, you kind of noted, you know, come from behind and win. You've done that a couple times on the road mm -hmm. this season, mm -hmm. you know, go into the locker room and not really play well in the first half and then come out, you know, in the second half and really put a good second half effort together mm -hmm. and come away with some road wins. Uh, you know, so far this season, I 
four road wins, um, more than we had all of last season. But, you know, talk about the mentality that, you know, winning on the road translates back into home and then success moving into, you know, towards the end of the season, maybe even to the GLIAC tournament. Yeah, well, that's something that, that you know, when we took this job that <clears throat> everybody here, especially our older guys talked about, you know, they were one and 11 on the road last year. And I don't know the history as far as going back farther than that. Um, but uh, for our guys to come out and get some road wins <clears throat> and coming from behind road wins that they've gotten this year, uh, really proud of them for being able to do that. That I think that really has sent a message that our program is moving in a good direction with a long way to go. I mean, we have a lot of things to work on, but I think being able to get some road wins and come from behind road wins down 10 or 11 at halftime and and have a little moxie per se and 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 grit and get that done in the second half and and uh, walk away with a couple of uh, good wins is is we're moving in the right direction mentally. Um, but I think the biggest thing is the guys have in those second half runs um, in those games where we were able to get those wins is they were they bought in wholeheartedly to the execution of what we're trying to do defensively first and offensively and making sure we're getting great shots with the people who need to be taking them instead of just taking the first shot that's available. So uh, it's the execution on both sides. That's how you get back into those games. And and uh, they, they kind of buy in that at halftime. I know Walsh, the last game, uh, they really just concentrated on four-minute games in the second half because you have medias every four minutes, five minutes, and they really concentrated on you know, we're not going to get all 11 points back in the first five minutes. We got to get it down to six or seven points in the first media and then three or four by the next media and then hopefully have it tied by the next one. And if you look at the, you look at the media timeouts of where we're at, we're about on cue, maybe off a point or two, but the guys were about on cue. So uh, they just kind of broke it down into chunks, uh, kind of the same way we do all out of our conditioning in the fall as opposed to one big monster hill we got to run. We kind of break it into chunks and knock out one evolution uh, and things like that. So it, so it's been some good progress uh, down the road. The biggest thing for us now is to maintain it and, and get even more consistent with it. You know, coming up, <coughs> sorry, coming up over break here, uh, one game before we get back into the conference uh, aspect of the schedule, uh, Delta College, local school mm -hmm. from here in uh, mm -hmm. University Center. Talk about, you know, what you expect out of that game, what, you know, to get us ready for the second half. Mm -hmm. Well, Delta's good. I mean, they have good player. They uh, Coach Griff's doing a really good job over there, and I know they're. Uh, I've heard many people say they're much improved talent-wise and team-wise over the, what they've been in the past. And I've not seen them play on tape or anything like that. Uh, we will uh, start knocking that out uh, over break and when we get home. But you know, we just met with our guys on this last practice here, and and the two things we talked about that were the most important thing over break, obviously, was rest. Just get your mind off it for a little bit, clear it out. Uh, but then towards the end of break, a uh, day or two before you get back here, you need to start concentrating on us again and what we need to do to be the best team we can be. And then secondly, once we get started with practice and start uh, watching tape and stuff, our mind gets on Delta. And that's the only things that matter right now, nothing else. So, um, so you know, they're local, and I'm sure there's a lot of guys have a lot of friends that are there. and. A lot of those guys know a lot of the guys that are here. I know they play in the summer a lot, so I'm sure they're all going to be texting back and forth four or five days ahead of time. But like we talked about it, it you can do all the texting and talking and uh, iPad stuff you want to, but at the end of the day, we just got to lock in on what we need to do to be the best team possible. You know, changing gears a little bit, uh, back in November, signed your first recruiting class mm -hmm. uh, here at Saginaw Valley. Talk to us a little bit about that class. Three three kids in the class, three solid players. Probably all play uh, forward for us. Um, you know, give us a, your you know your feedback on you know that class and what you expect out of them. Well, those three kids, uh, you know, they've been on they're on board. They're some of the first three kids that Coach Chin uh, got us on when we got here in in end of May, first of June, as far as that uh, 2013 class. Uh, you've got C.J. Turnage who uh, we're, we're very excited about. CJ has a huge upside. Uh, he's got a big, strong physical bottle, body. He's, I mean, he's 6'6", six, six, and he's already looking at 2, 205 for a high school kid. And, and um, we, we have a high expectation for CJ, uh, both sides of the basketball. Um, he's a very good athlete on both, on both ends, um, and uh, he'll need to be prepared to be able to guard uh, very good players, uh, similar to what Chris Webb is doing right now. 
And then on offense, he's going to have to develop into a guy that can help carry a big load for us. So we have high expectations with CJ. At, and CJ's position is just, we kind of envision him just being a player. I wouldn't say he's a, a two, three, or a four. Uh, he's just a really got a, a unique skill set for a kid his size that can play a lot of different spots offensively. Um, Wade uh, Gelhouse from down in Ohio is your is the stretch four that we were looking for from day one when we got here. A four man that can uh, trail three, pick and pop, um, stretch things out, and also post and um, and be physical. Again, Wade's probably you're probably looking at six five six six and uh, a nice big physical body for a high school kid. He's probably one ninety five to two hundred right now. And uh, again, huge upside for Wade because he's got. Uh, the ability to put on tremendous weight, and uh, he's not done growing, and uh, he's that four man that we can really use to really stretch things out uh, against some of the uh, bigger, maybe a little more slower fours, I guess, if you wanted to put it that way. But uh, he was a guy that we were really looking for very hard since we got here uh, to really help us with our system and the way we want to play things here. Um, John Morosi, uh, dad grew up in Saginaw. Uh, so he's got some big ties here, which was a huge help in his recruitment. Um, John is what you kind of consider a specialist. Um, John can shoot. I mean, John is lights out. You ask anybody in the state, um, and he gets it, and he gets it off quickly. Um, he's kind of a forward, but a, a, three, four, whatever it wants to be. But he's a guy that we kind of see that is going to really be able to play off of CJ uh, or your Chris Webb type guys, guys that are basket attackers and really play off of them and keep the floor stretched and spaced. And again, uh, John was a kid that we were looking for from day one. He, every team kind of has those specialists, those guys that just really lock into doing one or two things for you. And for John, it's shooting. And anybody in the state knows John and has seen John play um, knows that it, it's if it's off, it's it's got a good chance of going in. And, and so we're really excited about that. And I know when John decided to come, uh, CJ called right away, and he was so excited because he knows John, and, and he knows he's played with John in some summer things, so he knows what John can bring to the table as far as helping him with his game too. So, But the biggest part of all three of them is uh, their team guys. Uh, you, you go in their homes and their families, and they're, they're all eyes on you, and they're all in, and that's the most important thing. Talent is talent, um, but you, you've got to have guys that are willing to buy in to what you want your culture to be about. If we don't have 100% buy-in, we can have all the talent in the world. But without sacrifice uh, on, on each other's part to make the whole better, uh, it, it'll be, it can be a very frustrating deal. Coach, thanks for joining us uh, in Cardinal Rewind. And we look forward to talking to you some more uh, after the break. Thanks. Appreciate it.